Now see next concept is angular velocity and its relation between relation with linear velocity. See here already we have done angular velocity in the circular motion. Now we have to do the same concept in the motion of a rigid body. Suppose you have taken a rigid body is like this which is lying in the x y plane and rotating about axis z. This is your x y plane and this is rotating about the z axis. This axis is fixed, this is called axis of the rotation. Now, when the body rotates about z axis, each and every particle of this body constituting this body are moving in the circular path in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Suppose you have taken a particle at this point and now which is at a distance r, it is moving in a circular path like this. At any instant this particle p is at this point and velocity is tangential that is v to this side. Now, after some time or in time interval delta t, the particle reaches to this point and this angle is delta theta. So, the particle reaches to the point q. Again velocity remains tangential. So, in time interval delta t, there is a change in angle that is angular displacement, angular displacement is delta theta. So, angular velocity omega is written here delta theta upon delta t. So, angular displacement upon time interval is equal to angular velocity. So, actually the time rate of change of angular displacement is known as angular velocity. See here angular velocity is a vector quantity. Suppose a body is moving in a circular path like this that is anti clockwise direction. So, the direction of angular velocity is like this. So, we can give it by using the right hand thumb rule. Suppose, this is a right hand use this and fold your curl your finger in the anti clockwise direction thumb is pointing up. So, the direction of this angular velocity is upward that is on the axis of the rotation. So, omega is equal to this if you are writing delta theta tends to 0 then we can write omega is equal to d theta upon d t. This is called instantaneous angular velocity. Now, see we can write other relation with the linear velocity. We know v is equal to omega r. Already we have derived this relation in the previous chapters. v is a linear velocity of the particle, omega is angular velocity of the particle and r is the radius. In vector form we can write v is equal to omega cross r. So, this is the relation between linear velocity and angular velocity. Now, see if you are taking r is equal to 0, then you will be getting v is equal to omega r is equal to 0 that is linear speed is 0. It means the particle which is on the axis of the rotation where r is 0, its linear velocity is 0. So, this is about the relation between angular velocity and linear velocity. Now, see about angular acceleration. We have written angular velocity. Angular velocity was omega is equal to d theta upon d t. So, when we differentiate this with the time, so we can get alpha is equal to d omega upon d t. This is known as angular acceleration. So, alpha is known as angular acceleration here. So, now we can also write here v is equal to omega r. So, if we differentiate it, so we will be getting dv upon dt is equal to d omega upon dt into r. r here we are keeping constant. So, we can get a is equal to alpha r. So, this is the relation between linear acceleration and angular acceleration and this is for the angular acceleration. So, angular acceleration is basically the time rate of change of angular velocity. Angular velocity is a vector quantity. Similarly, angular acceleration is the vector quantity and its direction remains constant. That means, remains in the direction of the only angular velocity. So, now we can write here also here this is a is equal to 
alpha cross r. So, this is a, the vector form of this linear acceleration is equal to angular acceleration cross radius. So, this is about the angular acceleration and linear acceleration. 